Glory to God. Hallelujah. Open your Bible with me this morning to Luke chapter 19. The book of Luke chapter 19. We are still talking about going out to reach the lost. We are still talking about evangelism. We are still talking about soul winning. My Bible says that faith comes by hearing. As we hear and keep hearing, we are trusting God that this faith will be rooted in our hearts and will become doers as a lifestyle. I thank God for what is happening in our church. It will not cease in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 19, if you remember very well, last week it was Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 19, I'll read from verse 1. Are you there? If you are there, say, I'm there. If you are not there, say, wait for me. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. Mm, it's all about rich people lately. And he sought to see who Jesus was but could not because of the crowd. For he was of a short stature. He was of short stature. He was not a tall man. That's what that would mean. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste. And come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Verse 9. And Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. Verse 10. For the son of man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, O oh Lord, that you breathe upon us. Break your breath of life and give to each one of us that we may eat and be filled and be satisfied. May the intent of this word be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week, we talked about the rich man and Lazarus. From Luke 16, the parable that Jesus told, the Bible talked about a certain rich man and then a certain poor man Lazarus. And at the end of last week, we agreed that they both died because we saw it in the story. Lazarus died. The rich man also died. And they ended up in a particular destination. Lazarus ended up in heaven. The rich man ended up in hell. And we left here knowing that the rich man did not end in hell because he was rich. He ended up in hell because of certain decisions he made, especially one important decision, the decision to receive Jesus or the gift of salvation. Today, we are looking at this story as a part two to what we did last week. So the title of the sermon this morning is Count, God is Counting on You, part two. God is counting on you. Or you can say, again I say to you, God is counting on you. Can you turn to your neighbor and help me do that? Say, again, I say to you, God is counting on you. And then tell yourself, again, I tell myself, God is counting on me. And so last week we said we are the Moses and the prophets. Today, I'll go ahead and tell you that today we are to be Jesus. Last week I said we are Moses and prophets. Today I'll say we are the Jesus of this day. So we must be like him. Let's unpack the story. But before I go into this story, I, I looked up a few things. I like statistics. Uh, so I went into statistics and I began to look at mortality rates per day around the world. Death rates. Death rates. Because what we said last week was that every man, rich or poor, will die someday. Physical death. 
And depending on the decision they have made, they will end up in either hell or heaven. And we said clearly last week that these two places are real. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Hell is a place of torment. A place burning with sulfur and brimstone. A place that the fire will never be quenched. A place that you will grow worms and the worms will not die even though the fire is hot. It's a terrible place. Hell is not for one day. It's not for two days. It's not for three days. Hell is for a thousand and a thousand and a thousand and a thousand and a million and a million of years being tormented, being punished. Hell is real. And we said on the other side, heaven is also real. And so I decided to look at death rates and I was shocked that from the World Population Review, the death rate for Nigeria is actually number four. And so I came back home and looked around the few statistics we have. We don't keep them very well. And I saw that they agree. In Nigeria, we have 6,507 deaths per day. Per day. That brings us to about 271 person per hour. And so in a service of two hours like this, before we are done from here, over 500 persons have died. Where are they going? Are they going to hell? Or are they going to heaven? Before we are done from this service, over 500 people are dead. Are they going to hell? Are they going to heaven? I think you can see why pastor is not going too far. I think you can see why we are not going too far. When you get back home today, you will get the news that somebody has died somewhere. I couldn't find Abuja statistics. They don't keep them. I found the hospital ones not very correlated. But that's it. About 271 people die per hour. Where are they going? And that is where we have a role to play. God is counting on you. But let's look at the story for today. In this story, the Bible talks about Jericho. A city. Talked about Zacchaeus, a very rich man, a chief tax collector. That is like the uh, chief executive director of the Inland Revenue. And then the Bible talked about Jesus. Jericho at that time was a big commercial city. A conglomeration of cities where business happened, where people come to make it. And so permit me to say that Jericho is like our Abuja of today. A place of commerce, a place of administration, a place where people come to make it. Haven't you heard it before? I did not come to Abuja to count the buildings. I came to make it. So Abuja is like Jericho. It's not a place where people give attention to the things of God too much. They came here to make it. If you are here this morning and you are a truthful person, can you just raise your hand? What brought you to Abuja? Did you come to make it? So Abuja is like Jericho. It's a busy commercial town. People wake, wake up in the morning and go out to look for how to make it. They came here to blow. They came here to explode. They came here to hammer. Some of the who understand say amen. amen. So Jericho was like that. And my Bible says Jesus was passing through Jericho. Jesus was passing through Jericho. And there was a man in Jericho, Zacchaeus. A man who is not very tall, but the Bible says he has been seeking to see Jesus. Now, it was not detailed whether he wanted salvation or maybe because of the much news he's heard about Jesus, he just wanted to see. But the Bible says he sought to see Jesus. But because he was a short man and the crowd was much, he went to look for a tree, having calculated that based on this route, Jesus was going to pass through here. He climbed a tree to see Jesus. At least let's appreciate Zacchaeus. He tried. He tried. He tried. He knew there was a man and he was making his little effort to see the man. Even though we don't know his reason for looking for the man. But he tried. But Jesus, who is our focus this morning, like I said last week, I said we are to be Moses and the prophet. Today I'm coming to say we are to be like Jesus. The Bible says Jesus came to where he was. Stopped his entourage. He was moving with a crowd. Jesus had a packed itinerary. Jesus was not an idle man. Everywhere Jesus was going, he was going with a plan. 
His 24 hours was fully maxed. But Jesus came to this place. Where this outcast? Where this unpopular person? Where this sinner? Where this rejected rich man? Some of you don't know who a tax collector is. Let me tell you who a tax collector is in those days. They are rich. But when you are a chief tax collector, you are super rich. Unfortunately, you are the kind of rich that people don't want to come near you because they see you as an extortioner. The tax collectors collect tax for the Roman government. So they are not the friends of the people. In collecting for the Roman government, they add their own. Do you understand? So they actually take from the people and the people don't like them. But they are super rich. So they are lonely. Very lonely. Unpopular. Outcasts. Sinners. But Jesus, who is our example, came to this sinner and stopped Stopped all his plans. I guess for us, you are on your way to Dubai. You are on your way to the airport. You are on your way to the business meeting. And you saw this sinner. Jesus stopped. Jesus didn't just stop. Jesus engaged him in a conversation. Jesus didn't stop there. Jesus invited himself to his house. I came today, Family Worship Center, to say that it is time for us to become like Jesus. We are busy, I know. We are successful, I know. We came to make it, I know. But we are the Jesus of today. He says, as the Father has sent me, so I have sent you. What are we to learn from Jesus Jesus noticed Zacchaeus. It is time for us to start noticing people. Not to just pass. It is time to come all the way down and notice people. No matter how rich they look. No matter how prosperous they look. No matter how accomplished they look. It is time to stop and notice people. For every man no matter how accomplished they are, if they don't have what we have, they are empty. They are empty. Why did you think he climbed the tree? I got the answer. My Bible in Ecclesiastes says that in the hearts of every man, God has set eternity. So every man from Hitler to Abacha to the toughest of them all, to Idi Amin Dada of Uganda, former late, there is eternity in the heart of every man. There is something in the heart of every man that, tell them that, that tells them that there is a higher purpose. And so no matter what they accumulate, as long as the Lord God is not the Lord of that heart, that place is empty and they seek for it. And they climb all kinds of trees to see the Lord. Some of them may not be sycamore tree. Some climb political trees. Some will climb the tree of addiction. All kinds of trees to see the Lord. It is our responsibility as the reps, as the ambassadors of heaven on earth, to stand still and notice them, no matter how accomplished they look. We must notice people. Not just notice, number two, we must give them attention. We must give them attention. Jesus stopped, noticed, and gave him attention. And then he started a conversation. Yes, it is powerful to live a lifestyle of faith and people will be saved just watching you. But you know what? We can never rule out verbal conversation with people. If we are going to succeed in evangelism, we must open our mouths and speak to people. I know that you say that you are an introvert. God who made you knows that you are an introvert. But he added, go. Did you hear that? We must open our mouths to talk to people. I don't like talking to strangers. They are not strangers. God made them. The enemy is trying to steal them. They belong to this same fold. It is our responsibility to bring them. So it's time to talk to people. It's time to strike conversations with people. People who are rejected. People who are outcasts. 
I want you to know that a lot of rich people are outcasts. A lot of rich people are lonely. The people who flock around them come to collect. They are not really there for them. But Jesus says for us to give attention to the people. Not just the rich people. And I'll tell you later why it's not just about the rich. It's about every human being. Some are rich in adultery. Very rich in adultery. Some are very rich in occultism. They are all the rich. We are called to them. Whatever a man does that isolates them from God allows us or compels us to take notice of them and start a conversation with them, ultimately to win them over to Christ. Somebody say amen.